ओके टेल मी अबाउट द फ्लोज व्हाट फ्लोज वी हैव एंड व्हेन टू यूज व्हिच फ्लो ओके um so basically um i work majorly uh, with uh, three types of flows mm. so one is uh, screen flows and uh, one is a uh, uh, flow builder and uh, one is uh, uh, like uh, record trigger flows so in screen flows uh, basically it's an a uh, um, ui phase thing uh, where we can um, interact um, create the interactive flows and also um um so it, it is like um, most of uh, interactive flows okay so here in how many ways we can debug our flows or how you used to debug your, your flows um okay so um if uh, to debug flows actually uh, we need to first uh, go to the setup and uh, go to the debug logs uh, we should enable the debug logs of the a particular user and uh, we need to yeah so we need to have the um, like uh, check for the input fields and the particular uh, log errors and we need to have the execution uh, to uh, like look at the uh, flow execution so um, based on that we can uh, track the uh, flow and uh, if we find any error we need to uh, check exactly where it went wrong and we need to go to that particular uh, resource uh, and we need to uh, try to uh, escalate that and after the escalation again we need to run the flow and we need to go back to the uh, debug logs and we need to check uh, is there any error occurred again or uh, is it successful so uh, in this way we can actually test uh, test the uh, flows okay what are the main components we have in flows uh so uh, main components in the flows are like uh, um it's like one we have like uh, sc- uh, where i mean uh, sc- uh, what is a screen like uh, mm-hmm. we need to check at the s- screen uh, where we basically uh, collect the data of the user mm-hmm. and uh, we also have uh, um like uh, um variables uh, like set of uh, variables and uh, the uh, records that we have created uh, and also the uh, different type of uh, variables like uh, um, formula i mean fields like uh, formula or text number data type and all that and uh, also we have uh, uh, like apex classes and custom permissions okay yeah so we basically uh, have this uh, to run the flow and uh, okay so here uh, can you tell me what is the use of decision element in the salesforce flow sorry decision elements decision elements in the flow are like uh, uh, majorly uh, we the the custom uh, configurations which we have done and the target uh, which we are trying to uh, apply in that uh, flow so basically it would be the logic which we have applied and uh, the uh, logic in the sense the condition and we need to check out the outcomes of that so that would be the way to do that okay okay like suppose uh, a person has written a flow okay so what points you will going to check that this flow is bulk save or it is hel- uh, handling the bulkified records also so what points you will going to check here um okay so if uh, so basically if you want to check the bulkify records and all that uh, we, i think the logic is what i mean we need to check out the logic what logic they have uh, applied there mm-hmm. and based based on that uh, we need to um like what do you say uh, i mean we need to check with the um uh, in the logic itself we need to um yeah 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 we have the condition to mm-hmm. write the multiply so, in the in the logic itself so what things we will going to check like number of dmls or sqls 
or the loops he has made in this flow some these kind of things we will going to check so that it should not hit the governor limits yeah we will be checking all the um, limits of the um, records uh, that we are processing through mm. and the level of access uh, for that particular user who is um, uh, trying to do this and all that okay what are the limitations you think of using the salesforce flows salesforce flows limitations like uh, Mm, we uh, generally uh, we have the governor limits uh, so based on uh, we need to check out the governor limits for uh, flows and um, the uh, i mean error handlings uh, which it has uh, with the i mean in the apex code and also check out for the um, uh, custom metadata types mm-hmm. and look up for uh, some external user limitations also external user limitations like external user limitations uh, like uh, regarding to the community okay. okay so is there any limitation to the loop count also in flows um loop count uh, limitation yeah i think it is but i am not sure about it 2000 Okay. What is subflow? Um, subflow is something which will be iterated uh, to the main flow. Okay. So have you worked on this record trigger flow? Uh, record trigger flow, yes, um, I have worked on it. Uh, uh, record trigger flow is like. Uh, What was your scenario in which you worked? Um, record trigger flow is like uh, it's. Uh, like before saving the record and uh, i mean it's like uh, apex trigger only um, instead of using that we can uh, create the action of uh, before insert and before delete as well as uh, after insert and uh, after uh, uh, delete also so here we can uh, make the bulk update of the records uh, and also the updation of uh, i mean at the object level uh, if we have any changes of the Uh, any field i mean we we based on the uh, field change there also we can make this uh, thing like uh, look at the records or update the field and all that okay. okay so can we make our flow to run as per the uh, user settings like only the login user having the permission so according to this only i want the flow should work can we able to manage this okay so the flow should run as per the user settings mm. of that particular user mm. yeah security settings whatever the user is having okay yeah we can run so um, so we uh, we need to check the user information if that user has the access of getting the records and also if the Uh, user has the um, profile like uh, system admin mm-hmm. or equal uh, accesses, uh, then uh, it is possible. How we used to handle, or how you used to handle the errors in flow? Okay, um, so as I said earlier in my answer, we generally uh, go through the error message which mm-hmm. we get, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. as well as the um, like the. Uh, um, i mean for error error we need to check out for the error and we need to go to the debugging uh, debug logs and uh, we need to uh, retrieve the error and uh, we need to uh, try to uh, go through the error how it is uh, i mean where the error exactly occurred and we need to either uh, roll back the uh, action previously which it was and try to um, make the required changes and test in sandbox if that is working fine then we need to again uh, deploy that to the uh, production okay so uh, i want to know from your end so what do you think can salesforce flow replace the apex triggers yeah i think uh, it can replace uh, the triggers functionality but uh, not to the uh, extent where uh, 
there is no need of uh, applying for the development side why because um, config for the configuration side uh, side and for the administration it can be done because it is very flexible there is no need of writing any code and we need to just go through the uh, flow uh, which is like a click and point thing uh, we need to write our uh, logics and uh, make the required customizations so for that thing we can do it uh, uh, like uh, for the bulk processing thing um, yeah so we can consider it as per the admins admins uh, but, part. Yeah, but when it comes to more complex scenarios so we have uh, limitations also in this flow like loop count sql dms okay then i think uh, we need to uh, that is what like uh, mm. if when there are limitations we need to go with the trigger only mm. but uh, when there is a path without any obstacle for uh, um, task which we are assigned for it is possible it's a combination based on the requirement which we get uh, we need to choose out the path for flows or uh, triggers but uh, yeah that is what like it's a combination of both we need to 